Let's come back to agriculture, where Alluvial is currently working to enable over 100,000 farmers across several projects and initiatives in Nigeria, in Kenya, Ghana, Ethiopia, Uganda, and Rwanda, uh, and in Nigeria. For example, Alluvial is supporting women in agriculture with technology and other supports. The Mary Vaughn Kemedi is the Managing Director and CEO of Alluvia, and he joins me now to discuss some of the latest projects he's working on with other partners. Great to chat with you again on the show tonight, Vaughn. Good to chat you again. Thank you so much, Well, Bersin. thank you. Good, good, good to see you. Uh, I'm sure, thank you so much for making the studio tonight. Of course, you were on a panel, you're having a discussion at Luvial and a few others since around 5 o'clock local time. So we're able to make it here at 7 o'clock here in, the, in our studios here there in Abuja. But tell me about this new documentary on women in medical agriculture and who your partners are at Alluvia. As you know, a, a couple of months ago, we worked with 50 women uh, from mostly across the northwest and northeast of the country, uh, actually some other parts of the country as well, providing training in uh, tractor operations for these uh, women. Uh, so 50 of them were trained, uh, and uh, today we did the screening of the documentary, which was first shown on CBS and uh, is currently being shown across the, the world. So we did a screening of this documentary and used the opportunity to discuss some of the key issues around agriculture, particularly mechanized agriculture, and the involvement of women in agriculture. Uh, the partners, of course, uh, were uh, MasterCard Foundation, uh, John Deere, and, and ourselves. Okay, how much is Saluvia putting on the ground in Nigeria and what challenges are you looking to address for women? Um, we are obviously looking to mobilize uh, billions of Naira to continue to support particularly smallholder farmers. Uh, and um, we, we have an aim uh, to reach 70% women in all our programs. For the tractor, operations training, of course, uh, there were 100% women. At the panel today, we reached a tentative agreement with uh, Tata John Deere again uh, to train another set of women as uh, tractor mechanics, because we, we believe that for us to uh, involve women uh, in our activities, we have to make sure that as many as possible of the uh, interlocutors are also women. And uh, mechanization is so key to agricultural productivity, which is why we made sure that this training was focused on, on women. Uh, interesting. Uh, but are there peculiar, are there issues that are peculiar to women in agriculture in Nigeria and across sub-Saharan Africa? Are there uh, solutions that you and other partners are looking at to bring to the table here? Absolutely. Access to land is a critical uh, challenge. Uh, in our experience uh, across the country, we, we find that there are very few women landowners and where they have access to land, the land is often not up to one hectare. And even one hectare really is not, uh, it's not enough uh, to assure the, uh, the family that they will be taken care of across one year given that we normally in this country and much of sub-Saharan Africa uh, produce only once a year, as opposed to other parts of the world where with the aid of irrigation, people are able to produce at least twice a, a year. Uh, of course, access to finance is another critical challenge for women. Often many women are undocumented, and what that means is that uh, to access uh, capital is, is more difficult. And, these are some of the issues that are very critical and that, we, that we've been addressing in the course of our work. Uh, but, but how much uh, longer do you think, if we go a bit of a wider issues, the, the, how, how much longer do you think the Russia-Ukraine crisis will impact food, farming and agriculture in sub-Saharan Africa? And, and do you think women will be more impacted than men when it comes to this particular situation we currently face? You know, Basin, we've always maintained that we as a country and as a continent, we must move from incrementalism and be bolder in our solutions. If we know that we are importing so much of the food we consume 
Uh, and we know that import substitution is critical for our survival as a country and as a continent. Then we must know that when we plan, we must plan uh, in a bold uh, way. So for instance, uh, one hectare per farmer doesn't really make sense because as I mentioned earlier, the uh, proceeds from, the, uh, from one hectare farming cannot take care of an average uh, family. So what we need is to have fewer people involved in agriculture, but fully mechanized. And if you ask me what then happens to the other people that are no longer in the farms, I will say that you should go to a papa. Uh, when you go to a papa, open the containers there. You will see a lot of things in those containers. Those are the other things that will be employing people. Light manufacturing employs a lot more people than primary agriculture. So we need to move uh, our people uh, away from agriculture, mechanize more, make sure that those that are involved in uh, primary cultivation are able to repay the loans they get from financial institutions, and then the financing will naturally flow uh, to these areas of productivity. So this is what we need to do, and um, the current situation in uh, Ukraine, Russia, has laid bare uh, that uh, our survival is dependent on the rest of the world. And this, not, this needs not be so, really, given the amount of arable land we have in, in, uh, in Africa. Uh, Ukraine is a very small country compared to uh, many of the countries in Africa. And it's really embarrassing that we have had to wait for the United Nations, Russia and Ukraine to resolve some issues and open up the ports for us to celebrate that food is finally coming. We must produce the food here. It's the first thing we must be able to do before we, we think of other things. And we must be bold in our vision uh, for making this happen. All right, we thank you for your time tonight on the show and wish you all the best at Alluvial Agriculture. Thank you so much, Demary Von Kemedi, the CEO there.